So when the pandemic hit uh, back in March, uh, we decided to jump into the book of Revelation because uh, everyone was starting to speculate about, is this the end times? Is this the apocalypse? Is this the end of the world? And uh, we spent some weeks uh, in this series trying to understand that the ancient apocalyptic literature was not primarily to predict the end of the world. It's not a code to uh, unlock the secrets of the end times. No, an apocalypse was an, a pulling back and uncovering of what's really going on around us to put on glasses to see reality from God's point of view. In these last couple weeks with uh, the conversation that our nation is having after the death of, of George Floyd, um, friends, we are witnessing an apocalypse right now. We are seeing things uncovered. People are beginning to ask about the uh, what's really going on behind um, this great American country, and are there some not so pretty aspects that need to be exposed? Well, as we move into uh, the biggest chunk of Revelation, chapter six through mm, 16, or you could go all the way up to 19, you really get into the critique of empire. There's empire all around us in every age of history. Empire are those places of power. They're described as beasts that are controlled by an ancient dragon. The dragon stands behind these beasts and these beasts represent these, these ugly societies or cities or economies. Eventually it comes to a crescendo in uh, in chapters 17 and 18 where the uh, the empire is, is given the name Babylon as symbolic of all dark and godless cultures. Babylon is called uh, a harlot riding a red beast drinking the blood of the saints of the faithful witnesses of God. And before we get the downfall in chapter 17 and 18 where you see the economic system collapse, exposed, judged. We get this massive list of, of all the economic boasting. It's all about economy, 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 economy. And at the last thing listed is the, uh, that the whole thing was built on the backs of dehumanized people, slaves. The other theme throughout Book of Revelation is that there are faithful resistors, the martyrs, people who choose not to bow down to the beast, who will not take the mark of this, this uh, godless economic system that exploits, that tramples on people. These people are, who are uh, the, the, blood, the martyrs who are crying out from the altar, the souls who, who resisted and it cost their lives. And this just reminds us that throughout history, the blood has been crying out from the ground ever since Abel in Genesis 4. And so church, as we have this talk about racist, racism, and as we talk about this idea of structural racism, systemic racism, not just interpersonal racism, but that there's something sick deeply embedded in, in an entire society that has maybe been, the, the flames have been fed for 400 years. What we are trying to do is we're trying to have an apocalypse. We're trying to, to reveal hidden realities. Realities that uh, it would be better for some would remain hidden. But the first thing that needs to happen is we need to admit that there are, there are elements of the beast, beastly culture in our own nation. And we need to pull back the curtain. But woe to us if we would resist and deny 
and look the other way and turn a deaf ear to innocent blood that continues to cry out in our nation. We're not just looking for some individual, though sometimes one individual uh, is sort of um, the head of the system who is sort of uh, represents the uh, the whole and the way that they behave and the way they speak and the, the way they dehumanize other people for profit that the way they value the economy over human lives oh that happens yes there are many many uh, individuals throughout history who have the mark of the beast and who who are anti-christ in their lives in their policies and, uh, and so, yes, we can expose those too. And the mark of the beast, I don't think it's some embedded uh, digital code in your, in your wrist for buying and selling, literally. Think of those who profit from unjust economic systems. Those who, who are scamming and scheming. Those who we've seen exposed, who are in, in prisons now. We all are in danger of being cl complicit with uh, these sick systems and uh, exploitative economies. We all are in danger of being marked by that beastliness. But we're called as the people of God to instead bear the mark of the lamb and bearing faithful witness, speaking out protesting yes at whatever the cost jesus says no there's a different way of being human there's a different kind of kingdom that's coming in through my people and jesus is calling his people to be those who don't grasp cling hold on to boast of our privilege of our influence of our success but rather we would use our power in service of others and so today, as we hear from some folks who have experienced the injustice of our own Babylon-like systems, may we understand that we are living in the book of Revelation. We are having an apocalyptic moment of having the blindfold taken off and seeing things in a new way. And it may be painful to see that maybe we have been the beneficiaries of Babylon-like culture. But this is also a way of hope, a moment of hope, because there is a new way to be human. And God's people are called to bear faithful witness to the new city that's coming down a new city where justice rolls down like rivers of water. So brothers and sisters, open your ears and open your eyes and let this apocalypse stir something up in you today. Something that would move us to action and advocacy in solidarity with those who've been crying out for far too long. <laughs>